It's the Full Force News Burst with me, Chris, age of mech us a cup of tea, please, McLeod, aka Diagnostic 80. Thanks for that, Paddy. And Paddy, age of fecker, Lennon. We've managed to grab Teco Toy's head honcho, Michel Herm, to tell us all about his amazing Age of Mecha Kickstarter project. Let's get stuck in, shall we? At the end of September, Teco Toys dropped a very cool looking Kickstarter project called Age of Mecha. This 135 scale, highly detailed sci fi action figure collectible toy line focuses on awesome mech walkers and their pilots. The creator behind this crazy cool line is Michael Herm, and we have grabbed him today <laughs> for this interview. First off, Mikhail, how are you doing? It's great to have you on, pal. Hi, uh, nice to be on the show. Yeah, I'm doing quite well, I have to say. A uh, lot of work in the in the past few weeks since the Kickstarter campaign, but yeah, that was to be expected. Ex I think. Yeah, and a lot of stress, I'd imagine, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you get a lot of questions. Uh, you get messages. You have to answer uh, the people, and yeah, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. Oh, God, it's it's almost a full time job itself, just dealing with the social media and the messages. I imagine. Yeah, definitely, definitely, and also like things I, I see now like you have to react to to people's expectations yeah. a bit. updates i'm i'm uh i'm uh, throwing out uh, adding to the campaign like the add-ons uh, thing that came very early that was an instant request and yeah you learn a lot <laughs> about kickstarter more when when you start a campaign you learn more than than anything you could uh, get from some online blogs, websites with uh, tips and tricks and stuff like that, yeah. Totally. We've got uh, friends uh, that we actually, both of us work with, actually, Paddy and I work with uh, Boss Fight Studio. They started their company with a Kickstarter. So we, mm. we've heard all of the stories. We've heard so. all of the permutations. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it sounds like the kind of thing I wouldn't want to touch with a 20-foot barge pole, but I really appreciate that you have done because... What you guys have come up, or what you've come up with here, Michael, is is quite astonishing. Uh, Paddy sent me the uh, the actual project. He sent me like um, the Kickstarter page and said, "Check this out, it's incredible." And I have to say, I was absolutely blown away. So, but before we get into that, and before we get into the details of that, we'll start off with a, a nice question. We always like to kind of give, or we always enjoy hearing about uh, the creators behind these kind of awesome things. So, could you tell us a little bit about your background in animation and design, please? Yeah, um, I actually started out in a games company in, in the early 2000s as an intern. Awesome. And that was a super great experience. Didn't last very long because they went bankrupt in 2003, I think. Was that your fault? Did you did you bring it down? Yeah. Totally, totally. <laughs> totally. Yeah. And, and blew up a prestigious project. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, was the only survivor. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, because of the, of course, um, the, they they had this like internet first internet bubble burst back then. Mm. And unfortunately, they decided to go uh, with uh, German Telekom as a main contractor. They wanted to build an online gaming platform. And at some point, they were our exclusive customer. And then the internet bubble, the first internet bubble burst, they scrapped the project overnight. And then, so that that's that. <laughs> but we still had a game in the pipeline that we managed to finish. Oh, nice. It was quite nice. So we had like another half half a year or so in the company. But was, uh, what was cool about, because I didn't know it before, at, at that time I learned of the um, animation class at the university in Babelsberg. They had a film school there. Yeah. And then I applied and uh, since I was uh, unemployed shortly afterwards, I had a lot of time to prepare my application movie, which actually got me in. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that was. I'll have to cool. flash that up on the screen if it exists in <laughs> in reality. <laughs> I, 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 I can send you a link to that. It's online. Uh, Perfect. So. That's definitely uh, not, gonna, uh, that's, not, de that's going to be playing as you're talking. Yeah, not, not the application, <laughs> but uh, sorry, but the graduation will be at least. So. Yeah, that's cool. Um, awesome. Yeah, and then um, after studying animation, um, I've been like in the last year, I've started freelancing a bit more and decided I actually don't want to do this on my own, and I uh, was looking for for collaborators for. Uh, building an animation studio like more like a, uh, um, a collective at the time and um, yeah and we found a lot of people like uh, friends uh, colleagues uh, fellow students and in 2009 we uh, created talking animals a collective animation collective cool uh, which mm -hmm. is most like part-time doing short films like own short films uh, which works through the german short film funding system 
And on the other half, they're doing like commercial work, standard commercial work for movies, TV shows, whatever. Awesome. And yeah, you're, you're, ba- you're actually based in Germany as well. I should have said that at the beginning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, in Berlin. Yeah. So, and uh, yeah, a few years into Talking Animals, we noticed that uh, we have a, a very good reputation, but only for 2D animation. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> like on the 3D side, we were a little bit yeah, underused. Uh, or not, there were not many job offers yeah. uh, or clients approaching us for, for 3D stuff. And then together with the whole 3D team, uh, so to say, we we found a new company. It's called Lumatic. That was in 2014. And yeah, and this is where I'm sitting now. Awesome. <laughs> work desk. And yeah, we've been doing quite well, actually. Worked quite well. And yeah, still friends with the animals. Uh, whenever we need uh, hand-drawn 2D animation, we go to them. That's, That's awesome. my day job. And then how, like, how did that kind of mer- morph into, uh, like, kind of what you're doing now? Like, how how did, like, the, the kind of 3D animation and that kind of stuff, how does that kind of, kind of connect to what this thing, this new thing that you're doing with uh, Age of Mecca? It all uh, was um, running in the background with the, yeah. um, I had this um, opportunity to design these uh, Mecca model kits for Industrial Mechanica. Contacted the, the owner, Michael Fichtenmeier, at some point. They're doing resin kits, their own designs or, or designs of collaborators, like uh, very special themes, sci-fi, like more unusual stuff you usually do not see in the in the model kit area. Yeah. And um, I had an anim- animation of four legged walker and uh, uh, showed that online on a blog. And uh, there I found the ad for the for Industrial Mechanica that they are looking for collaborators. And I just uh, sent Michael an email and nice. uh, and then we started working together. So that was still a talking animals and it continued over the years. I think we made two Max and one giant dropship all in 135 scale. Yeah, then in between came Lumatic and at some point we had the opportunity to work on a feature animation, a 90 minutes theatrical movie. And in the beginning, I was not very involved in the process that came in between. I was at that time already focusing almost completely on 3D modeling, mm. did less and less animation. I still do some some animation at some point but definitely focus was on 3d uh, modeling so like before i i came in to the movie to to model the the, the character digital maquettes so the 3d models before you before you create the on, on which the uh, animatable models are, are based i uh, had a lot of time free time and after i was done with the process also so in that time in the beginning, I thought, okay, what I'm doing now, hmm, I have no idea. What, what can I do? <laughs> and then I thought about this idea that, that I always wanted to incorporate more movement into the industrial mechanical model kits. So I thought, hmm, why not, why not develop a toy line? Awesome. Around the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that was that's the natural progression, isn't it? It's like, no, let's make a toy line. Done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the thing the thing was actually like what was really fascinating with industrial mechanics is like the whole process but i only got uh the the to see the, the final product at the very end when it was already released so i never had an in-between I yes you said over the 3d files michael uh, sent uh, sent those to his uh, 3d printer uh, service company and I, I just saw pictures i never had anything in my hand before the, i got the final product sample and never and, and, and at, the, at that time when i was not so busy i coincidentally the the form 2 uh, came out shortly before and i was thinking hey why, why not why not try this on my own and apparently this machine is able to do these small detailed prints and uh, yeah let's just give it a try and <laughs> that's awesome oh, man yeah. I, I need a i need a 3d printer that that's that detailed i think that thing is incredible detail that yeah. we've seen so far michael could you take us through age of mecca what's the backstory behind it and what led to the decision of attempting to launch this toy line the initial idea was actually always to launch a toy line it just started out a little bit smaller the background story came a little bit or the story came a little bit later yeah <laughs> I, I i just started working with like very basic ideas within Maya, tested functionality. It's all based like on the movement of the of the things, like the whole frame, how can they pose, can they be compacted, stuff like that. And it's all form follows function. So I first had sort of a skeleton and then the armor plates design and everything on top. Yeah, and at some point, like it 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 it, it grew on social media, and I thought, okay, um, if I really want to create a toy line, I have to I have to have a background story, and it has to be more than just two max. I have to create factions and everything. Yeah. And mm-hmm. At some some point, I came up with this slightly dystopic story, like everything has to go downhill first, because I mean, you cannot have yeah. a mech on 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 perfectly 
uh, on a perfect infrastructure, like it would kill your roads and everything. Why would you need a mech? Like you have to have some, <laughs> there has to be war and the terrain has to be destroyed and everything. So it makes sense. Yeah. And then the sci-fi element, like that they uh, start exploiting resources in outer space, like on the moons of Jupiter and Saturn. And um, okay, these are rough areas. Better have a walker. Amazing. Uh, there. Mm-hmm. Was it and that? I mean, was it like a when she started kind of like getting into it and kind of thinking about it? Was did the story come quite quite easily then? I mean, were you just kind of like churning it out? Did, and had you had any kind of writing experience in the past with this kind of stuff, or was this the first time you'd really done this? I had a little bit of experience. It was actually part of our education at at uh, university. Um, like you had all sorts of stuff, like directing, writing was uh, part of it, but it's not really wasn't really extensive it mm. more focused on, on 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 the visual arts like drawing we had a lot of live drawing live action drawing uh, stuff like that but yeah a little bit of experience was there uh, we had uh, um, i had a collaborator a good friend of mine Stefan Sacher, who uh, studied uh, in my class we we um, uh, he was uh, director and i was co-director on our graduation movie and i wrote the first draft of our scripts and and uh, and then we just ping ponged back and forth. So there was a little experience, yeah. And I had thought of some other stories as well. I wanted to to do more movies, uh, which unfortunately never happened. But uh, yeah, but the, the the story for Age Omega actually it developed quite fast, but I changed it a little bit, like uh, in the uh, for the for the campaign and the story section. Like this is the the shorter version, and um, mm-hmm. I actually lost a follower in the beginning. <laughs> because of the story. Really? Yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was an interesting experience because I, I, I started like with, I wanted to have it uh, like sort of hard sci-fi. So I based it all on current events, like uh, just yeah, uh, yeah. exploring what the current events will lead to. Um, like at the time where uh, the political situation seemed a little bit more dire than it is now. Like in Germany, you had this right wing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, which uh, is uh, crumbling down now because they're destroying themselves. But back then they were still like uh, getting getting a lot of percentages in the votes. And I thought, okay, this is happening not only in Germany but everywhere. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, what's what's going on there? Like you had the whole fake news stuff, like the social media that was uh, uh, dividing people and everything. So I based it all on that and uh, and uh, like elaborated this a little bit more. Mm. Now it's just division between people um, through, through technological development. Nobody could control and blah and right wing didn't say right wing, but it led to like uh, civil unrest and uh, civil civil war and everywhere and uh, stuff like that. So it starts out very this topic, but in the beginning it sounded like yeah, there was one guy who said um, this is too close to home. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, this left-wing narrative will, oh my God. Uh, will lose you a lot of followers. <laughs> but just, was the the one. One. just the one. <laughs> <laughs> just the one follower. <laughs> yeah. the one. Oh, well. You live and you yeah. learn. Um, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. What were some of the influences behind the toy line and the, and the designs of the figures? I think the main influence was actually the the, uh, the industrial mechanical jobs uh, or the, the, the designs I did for that. Mm. It was Michael's idea to have this in one thirty-five scale. Then I thought, when I when I got the kits finally and uh, uh, looked at the detail and everything, and I, th- I thought, oh, this is really nice if you could do this like as an action figure. And then I all also remembered Starcom from my childhood. That's what we wanted to hear. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> really, yeah. That's that's essentially how I convinced Chris to, to do this. Like, Chris, <laughs> no, it's it's like, basically it's Starcom, like, dude. It's Starcom, it. isn't it? I'm like, yeah, okay, let's yeah. do this. Yeah. <laughs> That was actually one of my favorite toy lines as a kid, I have to say, and 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 still up to today is. It's I, a I would say it's a cartoon movie. as well, isn't it? Really good, yeah. solid animation as well. Like it's yeah. it's one of those ones that it's still got a lot of quality behind it. There's the 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 writing history behind it, and the fact they had like actual scientists and and all sorts kind of write like helping with that process. And people yeah. that were educated within, like you know, space travel and, and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, yeah it, it stands up to this day a hundred percent. Yeah, and uh, like also, I, I still like to watch the cartoons uh, from time to time, and um, I'm still amazed. I got this favorite episode where they are like, uh, I think on, on on Jupiter, they have this floating yep. station. Yeah, 
And this is so hard sci-fi. Yeah? It's everything mm -hmm. has a purpose. There's there's meaning to it. The scientists, as you mentioned, uh, who are in danger on on, uh, on those floating stations, the creatures, flying creatures, and everything. And I like the idea, which is also I, like that was a, was an influence that I said, okay, I don't want to have aliens in my storyline. This uh, yeah. space exploration, but on a very early level, still they just began. Mm -hmm. like, they're just exploring the solar system like like they also do in Starcom. It came through pretty strong because when the when I watched your video, the Kickstarter video itself, and you're getting the close up on the figure and you're showing all that kind of stuff, I was just thinking, man, like an upgrade, an updated kind of Starcom. It, that's what it feels like to me. And like, you know, I would love to see that kind of branded kind of stuff go in that mm. direction eventually. If they ever if they ever do bring that back, you know, from uh, in that scale. But honestly, having this in like you know in its place for you know it, it, you could or in addition to would be quite amazing. And I'm 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 blown away by the detail on the on a two inch scale figure. How is that even possible to you know get all the articulation? Especially when you see, I'll use masterpiece as an example. Transformers masterpiece figures have you know the occasional small action figure that goes with it, like a little Spike or a little Daniel, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And mm -hmm. they have yet to give us a decent, at that scale, kind of figure that kind of, re like, is anywhere near the level of the actual Transformer itself. What mm. you've managed to do is make the, the figure that's at the two-inch scale incredibly detailed and articulated to the point where I'm pretty sure you're using Cybertronian technology. <laughs> it's amazing. How did that even, I mean, how have uh, you managed to do that? I have to say it's been a lot of, lot of trial and error. I started out initially with, with the action figures just to get uh, the, 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 the proportions right, the joints, the, the wall thicknesses of stuff. Yeah, that must have been hard. Uh, printer resin, like uh, 3D printer, printed resin is very brittle. Mm. So you have to be very, very careful. Also, like the process of printing them, then you have to wash them. You have to let them dry because they're still extremely soft. You have to you have to wash them in alcohol. They're still ex extremely soft uh, surfaces when you when you uh, take them out of the alcohol bath. So you have to let them dry overnight, stuff like that, and so. So I had to learn this all the hard way, and uh, it took like in the beginning uh, roughly over forty iterations of prints before I had a before I had a. Uh, a version that that worked as intended and 3d printers do not are not the fastest things in the world either are they no, no. <laughs> fortunately wow. uh, i mean since i was printing at such a small scale and uh, and the form 2 is actually quite fast um uh, i think it took like roughly two hours to print oh, one i was one i was expecting like two <laughs> days or something like that. overnight like, or something I, yeah I, i've known people say like yeah i've had to leave that for three days i'm like how is that possible like how can you leave yeah. anything for yeah. three days and yeah that's that's impressive then too well in, in that case 40 times two times <laughs> that's not bad that's not bad at all but you have of course, all the all the all the uh, the, the modeling in between. I'm, mm. I'm, I always start out with Maya, bring together my basic forms and functionality, and then I, I, I switch over to ZBrush. And of course, it's a lot of like uh, uh, you have to cut out stuff, hollow parts, and uh, stuff. Lots of Boolean operations when you when you, ex uh, for example, I just uh, start out with with the ball joint ball on the shoulder, and then just subtract that from from the arm uh, in a part. It's kind of like function. trial and error to a degree, is it? Exactly, yeah. yeah and then yeah. you have to figure out the, the, the tolerances, like the, the wall thicknesses, uh, how, how thin can I go? Yeah. And that, that was also a thing, like in the beginning, I started experimenting uh, with ball jointed ankles and, and uh, wrists. Wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of a problem because when you, when you try to keep uh, this human anatomy, the proportions, then you 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 just can go so far with articulation yeah. because yeah. the wall thickness would be much too thin for on such a small uh, scale and an accurate proportion and probably break. And the first trials also didn't work quite well because they, they couldn't stand upright. Because the, um, another problem is that the material tends to shrink over time. Oh, right. And so the, the joints loosen up just in the prototypes. I mean, for the final product, it's not a problem because yeah. you have the materials, of course, know this. You're doing, using plastics, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. And also, they, do, they mostly use metal pins. Like, I got some figures, actually, they, they made some fine cuts in the factory already. 
and cool. they, use, they all use pins on the figures. I use our SnapFit because I wanted to save uh, material and, and parts and um, so. But it, it works as a proof of concept. I can imagine like it's really difficult, especially at that scale, to have the ball joint, like the ball and socket kind of joints mm. to kind of, you know, because from the one video I've I seen... I say I have a Starcom figure here and it's and they don't even have ball joints in no. it. That is... No, no. I have they, one too. They, they're, they're straight armed, you know, they don't have any, they don't have any, uh, really. the only arm joint is at the shoulder. Yeah, pin yeah. at the shoulder. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, if you look at all of that kind of scale figures in from back then where you've got like mask and I mean, I, I say this, it's not the same scale. They're all like slightly different uh, heights and sizes, but they're all very basic in you know as as basic as they can go because they wanted to make something i suppose very highly collectible but also not too expensive what you're doing is obviously way way more advanced than what those figures were and are and i'm just amazed that you can get the ball joints in because that 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 video where you show the the open arm and you've got the ball socket joint kind of on show to get the wall thickness around that particular ball joint like that must be tiny that must be so thin yeah it is it is yeah fortunately i usually have that routine when i when i print something out i let it sit for not longer than than a week before i assemble them <laughs> right yeah because up until then you can you you still have like the flexibility in the material and you can still easily pop them together actually like for the final product it shouldn't be much of a problem i mean you have even smaller figures like if you think of of the of the diaclone reboots, oh my goodness yeah like yeah they, mm-hmm. they, are, they are just half the size and and they have almost the same amount of articulation and, yeah. and it's crazy how small they are yeah um, they're so. definitely they're, they're definitely working on some sort of like sub level of size aren't they like they have to, yeah. they have to literally turn into ant-man at that size yeah. to make them uh <laughs> <laughs> you chose the scale i mean you, you kind of you talked about the scale but i mean why did you choose that particular scale it, does it have something to do with the the kind of the model kits that you were kind of basing this on in the first place uh yeah that's that was of course an influence uh, because i like the detail on that scale uh because you have these small figures and, uh, and 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 you still can make them very detailed i mean the the the, the with the model kits from from industrial mechanical it's basically the same approach they also like print these out and then uh, then they send the master pieces to somebody who, who creates molds and uh, this resin i like the idea back from from uh, starcom because the toys were so compact when it was a kid like yeah uh, you can you can you can take a bunch of them everywhere and and still have the whole uh, the whole series with you like a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, so true. and i like the idea of the scale like what i um i was always a little bit like uh disappointed for example with the star wars toys back then uh the kenner toys um, yeah. except except for the b-wing which i found was was the only spaceship that was kind of accurate in in in, in the proportions compared yeah that's to the- true actually yeah like I, I i did like the hoth speeder but I must admit, in well, terms of in terms of proportionally, though, it was slightly smaller than what it, than it should have been. And yeah, mm-hmm. I, I agree with that. And, and the figures right. in general, like the I, I, as a kid, I loved the five point of articulation because obviously action for Star Wars. But then it, mm-hmm. it was only like a couple of years later, and everything was like hyper articulated because thanks to GI Joe and all those kind of figures. So like mm-hmm. you, you tend that they were left in the dust pretty quickly weren't they after kind of being out for like a year or two yeah another thing was uh they thought like i mean a lot of the the, the thing like uh this um is, is influenced by this idea of having like uh correct proportions and and uh, again about this uh, other lines when you have bigger figures and you have actually u- huge vehicles but you cannot make them that huge they would be extremely expensive <laughs> and, and also like it would not like look right somehow so the idea was if you if you have if you have a smaller scale like 135 you can make really big vehicles but there's still like a six to nine inch action figure only yeah and, uh, mm-hmm. right and also was like um I've, I've posted something once on instagram um it was a very very early uh rough 3d model of a uh, of a uh, cargo lifter for these max nice this uh, is something I, I still want to do in the future like uh, in a later wave to have also spaceships and this kind of cargo lifters oh, and, that's so uh, cool kind of like alien mm-hmm. style with the uh, the power loaders and stuff yeah yeah like a little bit dropship like oh, yeah, that would be and... so awesome <laughs> so awesome yeah. 
I'm, I'm still working on that. I mean, the, the problem is hurry currently... Hurry up, it, Mikhail. Hurry up. Get it, get it done. <laughs> Jeez, what is taking so long? The thing is, I have to pop up with a, with a, uh, with a, uh, with a method of, of making the pieces that they hold together like uh, uh, really, uh, really sturdily because... Um, my, my printer is too small for such huge. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're printing uh, out little panels and then sticking panels it all together. And yeah. Sticking them on. Yeah. 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 It'd be yeah. like literally the the longest form model kit ever is what you'd be making. Yeah. That, but I mean, could you? I mean, could you see them in the, in the future doing things like that? But then also, even bigger than that, where you could have like ridiculous like bases and. St- space stations because that's something you know maybe even like smaller scale that could link together i mean is that something that kind of uh, is is in the is in the cogs working away uh, d- definitely yeah yeah I, I can imagine all sorts of things have i given I mean, away wave three or wave four of the <laughs> yeah something like that, like that. Yeah. If, it, if it if it works out at some point uh, uh if, if i can ex- establish this as a, as a as a toy brand and people uh, are really interested in in more uh there's a lot of things i could imagine there's actually no limits awesome oh my god i mean at some size of course but no no not talking, not talking <laughs> no, you said no limits now which <laughs> means which means the size of a house or a planet. we're getting a flag <laughs> <laughs> We're getting <laughs> Jupiter's moon. Um, <laughs> In one thirty-five scale. Wow, that would be that would be Rhode Island, the state I'm currently in. I think in terms of scale. Yeah. As the stretch goals go on in the campaign, you have you know more characters coming along. They stay and they're mostly like the co-pilots for the various mechs, um, which I think is a is, is a nice idea. Yeah, Can you talk great. a little bit about the the character development or for those later figures. It all started out with the. With the fat boy, the uh, FTB01, and uh, although he's a single seater, I thought, okay, you sh- but you should have two characters because they, in in the later development they became like the bad guys from the the Solar Crime Cartel or Soul Crime Cartel. Amazing. And uh, the other Max, because I also also wanted to have two seaters. I mean, uh, three of them are two seaters, so they need two pilots or can can seat two pilots. Was was there a thought of repaints in the head there as well as you were kind of you know like kind of using the same bodies but then yeah re- redoing yeah uh, that's yeah, that yeah. can be but uh, I mean mostly they 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 have uh, differences mm. uh, now at, at at this stage I think the only uh, two that are uh, the same are the the two heavy mech pilots the military guys that's they amazing the that's really yeah. cool um, yeah the the others are all individual or I mean they use same elements but. Um, also, the, I, I wanted to have like a, a bit of more diversity in characters. Like you also yes. have the, the female worker on the on the SCC on the bad guy side, the female police uh, uh, mech pilot. And then I thought, okay, if, my, if if I have these, if I have two characters, and I can like write these small character biographies, and I can have they can have a story they, like they belong together they have a, they share a, a, a history and and that's why they have these cross references in their character biographies like uh, how they met and uh, how they came to be a team and find it quite interesting so because every character needs needs a little story you have to get get started somewhere and playing out the stories and yeah. <laughs> that's awesome that's really cool now um we've kind of discussed kind of the 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 ins and outs of age of mecca itself let's talk about the funding campaign now the actual kind of kickstarter aspect how much are you seeking and what will you use those funds for other than just a massive party in like Colombia or something <laughs> yeah <laughs> good point yeah the base campaign is roughly four hundred thousand euro which is really really high um, and I'm aware of that. No, that's so you, that you, you're about. That's about the that the, like we've we've noticed in other Kickstarter campaigns, people have always gone a lot lower in what is really necessary when it comes to tooling, mm-hmm. which is yeah. ridiculously expensive. So I think you're right to to go yeah, high like, on that. I, I remember saying to you, Chris, where I'm like, four hundred thousand is probably what he needs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, because we don't. We've we've uh, we obviously we've worked with people who ran Kickstarter campaigns. We've backed a number of Kickstarter campaigns ourselves. And all of them have said you need probably about twice as much money as anybody thinks you do. Yeah. yeah. So you're probably going to need eight hundred thousand like <laughs> <laughs> for tooling up. You know, five five mechs mm. and you know ten figures and the two exo armors and the police bike and so on. Like, God, that's it. how much it's going to cost. Yeah, it ramps up, doesn't yeah. it? Pretty quick. It really That's does. Yeah. 
I mean, I have to say this: the, the whole calculation I took a lot of time. Like I've been, I've been working on the on the on the Kickstarter calculations. Yeah, since since over a year before I started this campaign. Now, yeah, I think we had the first quotes from the factories somewhere around August September 2019. Mm. And from then on, I've been working on the on the calculation. Uh, one one downer is uh, because I'm based in Germany uh, and we have to pay a lot of taxes. Uh, that goes into the into the calculation. I have to I have to be uh, very careful with that, and it's also shorted to my to my tax consultant, and she was fine with it. So that's a good good sign. That's a good sign, yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. No, but the the thing is actually, yeah. Um, I mean, you see, with a lot of toy Kickstarters, they 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 just reuse the bodies, repaint, and, yeah. and just exchange heads. So of course, it's a little less expensive than they are most most of them are in the, based in the United States, which is also like, I think a little bit easier on them tax wise. Yeah. The thing, it's so expensive because um, we, we need ex an extreme amount of, of tools for it. And uh, it has to do with all the detail. You have complex tools, um, which which need a lot of sliding parts from, from all angles because- uh, For creating the tools, yeah. Yeah, because of all the, all, all the surface texture you have on the things. Uh, then you have the aspect of the of the removable armor parts uh, on on each Mac, which is incredible, by the way. We haven't mentioned that <laughs> yet. The fact they have removable aspects on that that figure as well. I know, like again, Mask had the masks, Starcom yes. had like visors and and stuff like that. But you're throwing in like armor elements and also like you know backpacks and and guns that peg in and stuff like that. Yeah, we haven't really discussed that too much, but my God, that's amazing. Yeah, it's really, uh, I mean, also like when I create these things, it's just like relaxing for me you know, because it's uh, it's much different from my actual work as uh, uh, like commercial work we do in the studio. And yeah. uh, so this this is usually, I mean, when you when you do commercial work, you don't have much say in like uh, in the creative area. Yeah. Um, so it is already decided uh, beforehand or sometimes you have, but it's limited to the customer's ideas and most of the time. And so this is like really like uh, uh, for me a little bit to get away so it doesn't feel like work and, and I just toy around and play around and see what, what works and what I like, what, what would I like to see uh, in the toy when I buy one. Unfortunately, you've, you've made it another level of work for you by doing a Kickstarter, haven't you? So <laughs> yeah. now, you've got, now you've got no time for, an, no. For, for anything else. It's just, yeah, it's go from animation to, to this Kickstarter, this Age of Mecha. It must be ridiculous it is but yeah i mean it's still okay it's still okay i mean it's it's, it's only a month uh, of uh, crazy crazy work we'll see where it goes <laughs> yeah but it's gonna say and like, then and then, and then a year that, of... yeah and then like 20 <laughs> then years of the rest of your life afterwards yeah um <laughs> <laughs> could you take us through the individual backer levels and the various add-ons please um yeah we uh of, i started with the with the with the action figures and uh, then the exo suits, the exo armors, you can clip on to the to the action figures. Brilliant. And and mm -hmm. the third stage are the max basically. I I have to say um, the add-ons. I brought in the add-ons because that um, was part of the of, of 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 what I realized. I think it came on the first day already in the campaign or second day. People were asking about reward combinations, and I honestly did not thought of that i uh, think of that because i i had in mind okay if, if people want want the big package they are going for the for the top uh, uh reward the the full metal army yeah when mm -hmm. they get one of everything but it actually didn't come to my mind that people maybe want an action figure plus an exosuit plus a mech or or a mech plus an exosuit and uh I mean, you you would have probably. Yeah, I, 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 I apologize for that because that's basically what I did. I went for those two exo armor suits, and then I'm like, maybe I want a bunch of pilots as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I was, no, I, I actually, I actually assumed you would, um, you would do do add-ons eventually. So I just pledged for a bunch of exo suits and the figures up front and said, he's he's bound to sort it out sooner or later. Everybody does this. <laughs> 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 I'm looking at that Full Metal Army pledge right now. I'm like hovering over it, like, yeah, that's probably what's going to happen. I think. Yeah. God, that, yeah, but I, that's amazing. I honestly, I honestly didn't didn't really uh, think about that. But but that's a good thing now because um, that's that's a huge insight now for me because I, I see okay, this is what people actually want, like to combine them and so. So I had to come up with this add-on thing. I actually applied for the for the Kickstarter add-on 
beta program, but uh, they they refused refused uh, uh, my participation. Unfortunately, that's just shame. Um, doesn't seem to quit uh, fit quite into their uh, uh, idea of projects. So it's 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 the standard way to, to just add to the pledge amount now. But uh, I, I wrote an update on that explaining how, how you can do it. I was uh, super confused because I never used the app before, and there was somebody speaking of bonus, and it doesn't say bonus anywhere on the website. So apparently the app is structured completely different compared to the website. That sounds about right with every single thing I've ever had mm -hmm. any experience with. It's, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's one thing on one and completely different thing on the other. Um, I also, I've just noticed as I'm scrolling through your, um, <laughs> as I'm scrolling through the Kickstarter campaign, I'm loving the artwork as well that's been done. That's something that we uh, didn't discuss either. Um, some some of the artwork you've got for like the packaging mock-ups and things mm -hmm. like that that looks fantastic like who uh, is that all you're doing or have you had other people working on this as well uh no that's uh the the artwork is uh created by robbie turvino okay he's an illustrator from the united states super cool guy <laughs> he is uh I, I founded him i followed him on on uh, on instagram yeah and at some point i think he uh he followed me back and then i was always watching stuff at some point i thought okay um what i really need if i want to have a product i need good good packaging artwork but but i'm not an illustrator so i wouldn't want to do this on my own it's always my thinking is always uh, stick to your thing what, yeah what yeah you stay in your best. lane <laughs> and look for look for good people who can who are, who are good in their area and and yeah so I, I wrote him and i think he was a bit hesitant at first but I thought, hmm, I, I really like the stuff he did. I mean, he had some, like, uh, he is also a Mecha fan. Oh, brilliant. And, and, and he had some illustrations of Gundam, which uh, uh, Gundam heads, they looked absolutely amazing. And I thought, that's that's that's, that's what, what, I, what yeah, I would yeah, like yeah. to have on my packages. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, yeah, he, uh, I think at the beginning, he was a bit hesitant. He also had, like, a stressful job at the time, I think. Who doesn't right now? <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> he was alive, so there you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I wrote, I wrote him an email. I said, "Hey, hey, man, I really want to to illustrate my packages. Can you can you give me a number? I will pay you in advance today, tonight. Amazing. I send it over by Kickstarter. And uh, would you be interested? That's brilliant. And then he came back and said, "Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, these are my uh, rates." And uh, I said, "Okay, cool. Uh, ask what do you need?" And I said, "Yeah, can you do like." two illustrations, uh, each Mac and character. And uh, he said, yeah, OK, we'll do. Uh, here's, here's, here's my rate. And then I, I just send him over the money by PayPal. And <laughs> That's fantastic. That's I, I love I love the the colors on the on the cards as well, like that kind of like the soft oranges and the blues and mm. everything. It's a really gorgeous visual. Like, I just, I just think that, that it's, it just, it really, I don't know, it helps to build this, this universe in a way, doesn't it? Like the 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 art and the packaging and that all kind of goes towards building an idea of the for the customer like you know this is what the world entails and I think that's it's just beautiful stuff. Thank you. That was my doing again. Then I <laughs> I, I built that around and tried all sorts of stuff. And, awesome. Yeah. It's really yeah, but, but I love that. Robbie's really cool and uh, I really look for. I hope I hope this campaign makes it somehow. And I really look forward to working with him. What else he comes up with? The thing was I was I thought okay. Um, we start this process by I, I, I sent him some like grayscale renderings of, of the max and poses and the figures and poses and uh, thought okay that's help so he can just draw over it in his style and uh, what I didn't expect was that he came up with so much more like the, the, if you look at the illustrations the whole detail I mean it's going to be a problem because we cannot produce that color uh, uh, fidelity with the final figures but yeah. I mean it's like 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 with model kits you always have a fancy illustration and, and you just get the great thing it's, yeah it's great so yeah, yeah you have to deal with that yeah yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. if you no, want but, to paint the eyes go and paint the eyes <laughs> yeah, exactly. white no, but that, white does totally blown away with what what he came up with it was really wow this so I, I think he really got it and 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 that there's there's value in this illustrations and he really put the value and the effort in it and I, I didn't even ask this of him and 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 it's absolutely amazing to work with him that's great um do you, so the the figures are going to come uh single pack single carded is that correct yeah and the mechs will come in like a box is the no is is there ever a time where a figure is 
kind of comes with a mech within the same package? Is that is that something that, or is everything going to be separate? Like, I uh, know that's 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 standard. Okay. With each mech comes a, a pilot figure. Included, okay. But you can also get them separately, like for the people who don't want to buy oh, the mech. Oh, that's they, awesome. They also get them uh, separate. So this is why yeah. it's going to be four hundred thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, yeah, I, I was going to say that, that the pledge levels you have, you know, that it's it was, you know, initially it was it was ten euros for a pilot figure, fifty euros for a mech, and then twenty five for one of the exosuits and a figure. Like yeah. that's a pretty that, that's a pretty good price, I think, mm. for what you're getting at that sort of level, like the, the mech and a you know a fully articulated mech and a fully articulated action figure for fifty euro is not bad at all, really. Yeah, yeah, I was. Uh, thank you. <laughs> That's yeah. That's the idea. I wanted to keep this uh, as affordable as possible. And and looking at at similar products on the market, they're usually in in the seventy euro and up up to hundred euro range, uh, depending mm-hmm. where you live, of course. Um, but that's also reason why um, the, the the funding goal is so high uh, because they all they of course have like the factories all have a minimum order quantity. Mm-hmm. But um, when I uh, when I would go at the minimum order quantity at that price, which I would think be like 100, 200,000 euros in debt after the campaign. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. So you can just like uh, achieve it with with the numbers and and I just have to have to get more supporters to the campaign and and sell uh, uh, crazy numbers. Uh, sell a lot of max. <laughs> sell a lot of max. Uh, so it's in the thousands. Yeah, because you have these high fixed costs divided per unit uh, for the mm-hmm. company. So that's just the way to go. Um, otherwise, I think I would have had to offer them for for over hundred each, and, and I wouldn't want to do that. Yeah, that that that's the balance, I guess, isn't it? Of trying yeah. to kind of keep the individual costs for these particular things kind of realistic, and then yeah, and I, I think a lot of the time people don't necessarily see that; they just see they'll just see the funding goal, or they'll just see yeah. the all in price, or they'll just see, mm-hmm. and, and it's like yeah, there's there's kind of a reason for that, but. That said, uh, out of all of the stuff that you've kind of shown off that you've got on the actual Kickstarter campaign so far, what's been getting the best reactions for you? Like kind of, uh, you know, who, uh, what's been kind of getting the most traction in terms of like designs, mechs and, and pilots? I uh, think the most popular one is the Astromech, actually. Yeah. People are. And this is also like a steep learning curve uh, Kickstarter thing. Now I know that people would prefer this one and it's a bummer, it's a stretch goal. And I think that's mm-hmm. why many people are holding back because they probably don't think it reaches the, that stage and right. they definitely want that thing. So I think if we, if it, if it shouldn't work out, I will definitely have a follow-up campaign definitely designed to, to, to please the backers or let's say to, 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 to meet their ideas to better meet their ideas so i think with the follow-up campaign probably the astromech will be in the base campaign and not as a stretch goal cool cool Mm -hmm. yeah because that is that it looks amazing they all do they all look fantastic yeah paddy have you got a favorite by the way i um i went in on those um i really love the exosuits you're doing for the figures the little the little suits i think that's a really nice idea that hasn't really been done before i love the idea just ironing up a figure and to do it at that scale uh, and as nice as they look, I was like, yeah, I think I'm, I want them immediately. I, as soon as I saw them, I wanted them, you know what I mean? Sorry, you, you, you can, sorry, I, I, I kind of, I, I started interviewing Paddy then, Mikhail. <laughs> <laughs> so Paddy, tell us about this, this Kickstarter. I'm kidding, okay. <laughs> Michael, can I ask, have you learned anything else from the comments and feedback you've gotten so far? Like, have you, have you, have any, any, any comments surprising you? Yeah, what I have to say, what was um, most surprising to me, I mean, I started this online on, on social media, Facebook, Kickstarter, uh, Instagram, Twitter. So I actually thought that more people were familiar with how Kickstarter works. <laughs> you have this, I didn't mean to, didn't mean to yeah. laugh so hard then. It's, uh, <laughs> It's the most complicated <laughs> process for not just a creator, but for a c- consumer. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. It's a great way of doing things, but it does take some real thought, doesn't it, about from both both sides, I guess. So, uh, yeah, I was really surprised because, I mean, of course, uh, uh, as I, I found out, uh, heard from many people that it's the first time for them that they support a Kickstarter. And mm-hmm. yeah makes sense of course they're not familiar with the yeah. mechanics it's it's an in in a general thing i think i was just surprised because people are using all this digital stuff they're using uh, uh, the internet or digital media and stuff still some things are, are not uh, uh, well known 
I was a bit surprised. <laughs> yeah, like Kickstarter is a funny one for me because it, it has this it has this psychology attached to it. And we were, we were talking about this prior to us recording this, Mikhail, but like that, that thing of like, um, you know, the, the philosophy behind it of, of, of someone utilizing Kickstarter and they'll see the project and even if they're interested in it, and I've done this myself, I'm doing it now, <laughs> they'll <coughs> hold back rather mm. than just going straight in and saying, yes, I want to back this. There we go. Like, I think obviously doing this interview like not many people are going to have the ex the the luxury of speaking to the creator directly and kind of getting an idea of what's happening and where it came from and the ideas behind it and that does help you know like form a lot of i suppose decisions for the for the person the consumer so like but I, the, the weird thing about kickstarter is that people won't go into it straight away even if they really want to there's like almost like a thing of oh, i'll hold off and see if that gets unlocked or i'll hold off until this happens or i'll hold off. and the whole thing is if you're not going in on it it's probably not going to reach that level so mm. you know you're better off just backing it you know and then changing that level if you want to like going up a bit or coming down a little bit if you know and i think a lot of people i think a lot of people don't realize that you don't get charged unless the campaign is successful that's another one yeah. and, unle- yeah. and, and, and not for 30 days or whatever yeah. um you know they, they assume they're putting the money in now yeah uh, yeah whereas they don't, they don't realize that well if that t- that one thing i don't like or that that one thing i really like doesn't get unlocked i can reduce my pledge by 50 euro the day before the campaign ends yeah, you exactly. Know, I don't, you know, I can put in, so I can put in the three hundred euro for everything else I want. I don't need to put in the fifty euro for that stretch goal that's a million euro. Yeah. So they say, well, I'll wait and I'll put in my three hundred and fifty euro when that thing gets unlocked. Yeah, yeah. Not it's realizing a, that it won't get unlocked. It's psychology. <laughs> it's like a psychological. Like it's weird, and it's it's Kickstarter has has created this this kind of thing, and crowdfunding in general has kind of created it. If it's not a very basic thing of put this in and you'll get your thing if it's like breakdowns and you know people will like go back and forth with what they want as well they'll kind of be like oh but i think i can stretch to that and i think i'd like to have three of those now seeing them and now i've seen a video and you've seen the comparison with another figure i can kind of get a better so there's all this kind of stuff goes into it i mean that doesn't help you does it because i mean it must be really stressful trying to see where the numbers are every day yeah, yeah, of course, of course, that doesn't help. Yeah, but it's like Paddy said. Yeah, they, they, most of the people are not familiar with the mechanics. They don't know that they don't have to pay uh, anything if it doesn't get funded. Yeah. It's basically risk free uh, for for both the creator and 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 the customers until it gets funded. And I have to answer those questions a lot. So, I mean, people are writing me on all, all platforms. And, oh, what happens if it doesn't fund? Do I get my money back? <laughs> it doesn't mm-hmm. even go yeah, anywhere. Like you, ne- you never gave it in the first place. Yeah, <laughs> it's like an IOU. Is what you. It's an you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I mean that is the thing. Like again, we take it for granted because I mean I've, this is probably the twelfth or thirteenth Kickstarter I've probably not even just backed, but like just you know had a an in like a, almost like a, an invested interest in like a you know like knowing pretty much everything about it now. But like mm. that is um, it, you know that that's easier for me to kind of deal with. But and I'm still one of those people that's like. Oh, do I go in just yet? And it, it's just psychological. It's weird. It's a weird mm-hmm. thing. I'm um, guilty as well. Yeah, I have to. <laughs> it's it's not it's, with all not with all Kickstarters, but 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 with some I also held back until a later mm-hmm. point in the campaign. And the thing is, as well, I I always want it to be. It's weird. Like I want it to be successful, and then I'll jump on. And I mean that doesn't make any sense because I know at that point I'm going to be paying for it. So it's no different for me if I just went in early. And just went, there you go. And there's been, a, and there's, and there's been a couple of campaigns, Chris, where you've pledged in the last 30 seconds. Last five seconds uh, was one. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, it was It was literally ticking down, and I was like, do I do this? Do I do this? And I went, sod it. I did regret that one. I'm not going to say what it is on, on, on here, um, yeah. but uh, I did regret doing that for, for one of the, uh, the, the, the situations. Not, obviously, in this case, completely different, because I... These mechs look incredible. The pilots look incredible. It's so Starcom. It's so like you know on on a next level, obviously on a much higher level. But like it's it's really cool stuff. And the reason I was I was last minute with that was because I wasn't a hundred percent sure. And mm. even when I got them in, I was just like, eh, oh well. But anyway, that enough of that. Got on. I don't want to dig too much more. <laughs> Speaking speaking of other figure Kickstarters, um, you know, myself and Chris are both 
you know, regular pledgers to these sort of things. And there's been a few where we've pledged and haven't got figures or we've got figures and they have been complete shit. I'm not going to say any names, but people know <laughs> who I'm talking about. So, you know, it's 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 one thing to get funded. It's another thing to actually get the product made and produced to the quality you need. Have you looked mm. at the experience some other campaigns have had in that area? Um, yeah, I've, I've been in contact with a lot of people like from the indie toy community because at the beginning I had no idea how to go about this. Um, act, the, the, the whole thing uh, uh, came about by, by getting information from people who have already done this. Mm-hmm. And I've been in talks with, uh, uh, in, in communication with some people and I heard uh, crazy stories and also like warnings from certain uh, factories that uh, yeah. um, may hold tools hostage and want ransom ex- money. Exactly yeah. that. Exactly that. But at some point, I uh, I got uh, somebody recommended Chris Gorich to me. Uh, he's now working for Four Horsemen. I think he managed um, cool. uh, some of their Kickstarter campaigns as well before. Uh, I think he was working freelance for them. Now he's uh, he's part of the Four Horsemen team. Awesome. And at the same time, uh, he got recommended to me. Uh, he wrote me an email. <laughs> Uh, introduced himself and uh, and and says uh, huge coincidence apparently, but or, I don't know if he has been talking to anyone. But yeah, we've been in contact since I think early last year and um, been discussing this. And he he has got this like roster of factories uh, uh, with which he's been working with for for the past couple of years. Um, some of the factories also did the the the, uh, the tooling for the Four Horsemen figure line and also manufacturing. Uh, factories uh, who then produced their toys and he got me several quotes which took a lot of time because it's it's massive of course but um, handled the communication introduced me to an online board where where we can exchange uh, thoughts with uh, with the manufacturers and stuff like that so that was was immensely helpful and he's he's now uh, on board as production manager on on, on, on the project and, brilliant uh, mm-hmm. and he also organized already like uh, that was uh, uh, middle to end of last year we we did a little let's say like uh, like a like a test the factory the tulik factory did their own 3d prints uh, they call it a fine cut which is the pre-stage to the to before they create the molds and uh, we commissioned them to uh, create uh, a few of the max and figures and they already did uh, the, the conversion from from my STD, uh, STL files to to uh, to CAD formats, a CAD format, which they can use. I don't know what the machine is called that uh, creates the molds, but and so they already we'll like call it the, the mold machine, the mold. <laughs> the master mold. We'll call it master mold. Yeah. <laughs> the, the mold of three thousand. Yeah, yeah, that'll do. So, that just throw a number on it. Perfect. Fat boy, we'll call uh, it. FT. Yeah, the fat boy. <laughs> uh, yeah, so they so they already like uh, took care of uh, stuff like uh, make sure there are no undercuts and, and things like that, or, or how how can we how can we change the the, the, the moving parts so they, that we have good good joints, good fit and stuff like that. Also, like questions where do we uh, snap fit is of course out of the question for the final product because it doesn't it shouldn't come apart at least like the fingers and everything that's uh, movable. And so they, they already planned in like doing this with pins and they changed the parts accordingly. Wow. And uh, in, I think in, it was in January this year, they sent me those fine cuts. And I have to say, uh, I, I was blown away. Awesome. They enhanced the detail, yeah. the, the, the fine cuts they sent. And, and, and Chris told me what they're doing with the fine cuts. Everything is cool, but the final product is, is even a, a, a notch uh, or level above this. That's fantastic. And I was I really was blown away. The detail is amazing. They enhance it so much, and it's so crisp, and 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 everything looks so much better than what I even can get out of the uh, leading uh, consumer 3D printer. That's um, brilliant. It's it's really cool. So I have uh, gained a lot of trust in those companies yeah, and seen yeah. that, seeing what 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 they did. The amazing quality of their work is so that's that's quite assuring for me. So I'm. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm um, I, I don't have any concerns in that direction. I, I think I think the downfall of a lot of those other campaigns has been going to a cheap factory and thinking we can get this done for near to what our budget is. And yeah. I think putting putting a little bit of extra money in at the factory level really does yeah. seem to be the, the key to get mm. these things produced. Yeah, That's there's been you know? so many yeah. issues in, with the yeah. factories, haven't there? Like it's it's almost like something something new every day for some of the uh, Kickstarter campaigns. Uh, and crowd mm-hmm. um, and just general count crowdfunding campaigns, but like it does, it makes a lot a lot of uh, difference to to get that 
that quality assurance and uh, that seems to be what you're doing here which is fantastic and i think will be i think we'll go a long way to, to kind of reassure some people that might be on the fence uh, with this with this particular uh-huh. kickstarter so that's mm. awesome anyway michael oh sorry i've called you the wrong i've pronounced it correctly. Right. I'm, 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 I'm gonna say i'm gonna say that again anyway michael thank you so much for uh for doing this that brings us to the end of the interview um absolutely loved that thought it was fantastic i hope you've enjoyed yourself yeah definitely that lies thanks liar. for having me absolute liar uh, <laughs> <laughs> no not at all man absolutely really enjoyed that um it was great to hear about the, the you know the actual the, the ins and outs of everything it's always fascinating to kind of get that insight uh, and i think our listeners and viewers will really enjoy that and hopefully um kind of you know keep this this kickstarter going and get it funded now where can people find you where can people find techo toys online to find out more we're on instagram uh with the handle techo toys uh twitter techo toys facebook group uh page techo toys and uh our website of course techo toys.com awesome i'll have all those i'll have all those links in any descriptions that you find this video in uh, below. Oh, uh, YouTube as well. Oh, brilliant. Okay. So is that yeah. Techo Toys by any, by any chance? <laughs> um, you will find uh, you will find uh, the uh, YouTube uh, channel on Techo Toys. I don't know why YouTube doesn't have any channel names. You always get this cryptic uh, URLs. Oh, yeah. The URL is about yeah. seven miles long, isn't it? Yeah. 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 But, but if you, if you search <laughs> Techo Toys, you'll find it. And uh, surprisingly, uh, YouTube never played a big role up until like August. And then one video I noticed one day started going up. It's just coincidentally, I was I was just, oh, let's check my channel again, see if something happened. Maybe somebody left a comment. Oh. And so I was <laughs> <laughs> nothing for years. And then suddenly I, I, I watched this grow every day. And at some point it, it, it reached, now it's like over 500K views and uh, <laughs> some other videos as well. So apparently it must have landed on some people's start pages yeah. Yeah. All, all we need is you know one percent of those people to back the thing and this thing will be funded and uh, but well it would stretch goals exactly yeah like that is honestly youtube has the weirdest algorithm ever i've mm. never worked it out um yeah because it'll be like I'll, I'll, I'll you know i'll post a couple of videos and one of them will hit like thousands of views and the other one will be like a hundred and something and it'll be like and and they'll be like very similar in their in their content and i'll mm. think what what was the difference there in any case that's it's by the by again um again i'll have all those links in the descriptions below wherever you listen or, or watch this particular podcast guys uh and I, I must admit get involved in this kickstarter because it is amazing the details it's exceptional the figures are beautiful the the mechs are insane you're gonna absolutely love it anyway Thank you so much, Mikel, for joining us. And Paddy as well, thanks for jumping on, mate. Always oh, nice to be on the show, Chris. Liar. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks, Mikel, mate. Uh, good luck with everything, and we hope it funds and then some. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. It was nice guy. talking to you guys. Awesome. That's it for this installment of the Full Force News Burst. Thank you to our awesome guest, Mikel Herm of Teco Toys, and to my awesome co-host, Padwado Leningrad, to give him his full name. See you next time, and as always force make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking sharing and commenting on these videos and as always you can keep up with the show after listening by following on twitter at the full force liking the facebook page facebook.com forward slash the full force and if you would like to contact the show you can message us on either of those platforms with feedback or questions We have also started a Patreon page, so if you want to see your name up in lights on these videos or enjoy exclusive bonus content, then check out patreon.com forward slash the Full Force podcast or click the link on any of the posts this podcast appears in. Full Force.